We're going to solve this problem using variation. Reading the first sentence gives us the relationship. The simple interest for a certain savings account is jointly proportional to the time and the principal. When I look at this sentence, the subject of the sentence is simple interest. So this is my first quantity that will be a part of my equation. Next I'm looking for the verb, and the verb in this case is is. The verb is very important because that's going to be the equal sign in my equation. The relationship is jointly proportional. Jointly means that it's the same as direct variation, which means we will model it with multiplication. And we know that jointly means that there are more than one variable. And so we see that our other variables are time and principal. So to set up my model, my first step is to define my variables. So each of the underlined quantities, first is simple interest. I'm going to use I to stand for the simple interest. Next is time. I'm going to use T to stand for time. And finally is principal. I'm going to use P to stand for principal. My second step is then to take these variables and put them together in an equation that shows the relationship between them. Since the subject of the sentence was interest, interest will come first. The next part of the sentence is my verb, which I have circled up here as is. The is is the equal sign. Because it is a variation problem, k always follows that equal sign. Now, the jointly proportional is a type of direct variation, which means it's all multiplication. So I'm going to multiply this times the time, which is my next variable, and times the principal, which is my last variable. I'm going to use this formula for the rest of the problem. It doesn't actually ask me to do this, but in order to work through this problem, I need to know the value of this constant. And you see the very last question, what is the meaning of k? Well, first I have to find k. So my third step in any variation problem is that finding of k. And I'll do that by substituting numbers that go together. So I'm going to move on to the second sentence in my problem, where it says, after three years, the interest on a principal of 5000 is $525. So I'm going to substitute each of those numbers into my formula. The interest, the i in my formula, is $525. That equals k times the time. The time is given as 3 years times the principal. The principal is given as 5,000. I now have to solve this equation, so I'm going to simplify here on the right-hand side by doing the multiplication. So I have 525 is equal to k times 15,000. In order to get k by itself, I want to divide both sides by the 15,000. I'm going to do that with the help of my calculator. So k is equal to 0 0.035. So now I know k. I'm ready to go on and answer the question. So step four of a variation problem is to solve the question. So looking at my problem, very last sentence here, find the interest earned over five years. So it told me find the interest. So in my formula, the thing that I don't know is the interest. That's what I want to figure out. So interest equals, next in my formula is k, and I just found k. So 0 0.035 Next to my formula is time, and we're given here time is 5 years. And last to my formula is principal, and so find the interest. It doesn't say that principles change, so I'll use that same exact number. And all I have to do here is multiply these three together. So again, I'll go to my calculator, and I find interest equals $875. So that has taken me the whole way through the variation problem. This particular question, though, asks me what is the meaning of k in this context. So I look back at k, this decimal. 
Well, if I think about the way that interest is calculated, I'd have to know the interest rate. And so this is the interest rate. So K is the interest rate. And we know that rates are often out of 100 or given as a percent. So if I'd move my decimal two places, this would be 3.5 percent as the interest that is earned on this particular account.